Okay, so hi everyone. A very good evening to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well. Um, hi Sanu, hi Ramesh, Devesh, hi all of you. So we're just going to wait for another uh, maybe 30 seconds to a minute for everyone to join. And then we're going to start this particular session. So just give us, so just say hi to me guys. Say hi. Hello everyone. Just say hi on the comments so that I know how many of you are there on the call. Hi Sanu, good evening. Okay, hi Dave Status. I don't know your name. Okay, so we're just gonna wait for a minute or so, guys. Just give us a minute. Yes, okay. Hi Sarin. Okay, hi Pushotam. Yes, so today we have a very interesting topic lined up for all of you, and we have a very interesting speaker with us today. So I'm quite looking forward to it. And uh, just another 30 seconds, I guess, and we're going to start. Hi, Rohi. Hello. And welcome all of you to this session that we've lined up for you. So, okay, great. I think uh, we can start. So uh, a very good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Namrata, and uh, welcome to another wonderful session in the AIKI series that we have lined up for you. So as all of you know, AIKI is basically a India Karega Invest. And, uh, you know, we've been uh, doing these sessions for you for more than two years now, where we pick a topic and we get an industry speaker who talks about that particular topic. And all of you get a very deep understanding of, uh, you know, that particular topic that we've chosen for you guys. Uh, today, we have uh, something very interesting. Today, we're going to talk about the housing theme. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, how housing as a theme in our investment portfolio can work for us. What are the different aspects about the housing theme that we should be looking at? I truly really believe that housing as a theme is something that, uh, you know, is a lead indicator of the economy. I mean, if housing is doing well, then, you know, we know that there's something doing, going right in our economy, right? And think about it. When does an individual think of buying a house? It's only when he or she is confident about his future income, right? When you're sure that you are you are confident that your future income is going to come that's when you look at housing uh, buying a house for yourself of course housing as a theme i think the best thing which i was telling our speaker as well is that there's so many sectors involved in housing that you know that uh, and the sectors which have the potential to generate good returns for us so when you're looking at buying a house i think home loan becomes the first thing right so you look at the bfsi sector then we have you know your cement construction and a host of other sectors which are a part of the housing theme so today we have with us Mr. Manish. Uh, he uh, he's basically uh, the head of product communication with ICICI Prudential Mutual Fund, and he's going to give us all the details about the housing team. And uh, guys, feel free to ask us as many questions because we've uh, kept easily uh, about you know 25 minutes to half an hour for just Q and A. So we're going to answer all your questions related to this theme. And uh, over to you, Manish. Uh, you know, please please take us through the housing team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Namruta. And uh, yeah, so thank you everyone for logging in. Uh, I think Namruta laid out a beautiful context for housing. And uh, I think I will try to touch up more on uh, some of the numbers that why housing as an opportunity at this juncture looks extremely positive for if somebody is looking to invest in housing as a thing. Uh, so just to give you a brief that how I'm going to start or how I'm going to construct the whole presentation is uh, so first five, seven minutes, I would like to spend briefly on the overall equity market, how it is looking at this point of time. And in the next, uh, let's say, a couple of months, what are we expecting out of equity market? So I'm just setting a context at this point of time so that you can relate to it that uh, how the equity market is 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 looking at this juncture and how the the housing theme blends well with this overall equity outcome right so that's how the structure would be so five five to seven minutes uh, i would be covering on the equity market outlook perspective and then the next 15 15 to 20 minutes would be on housing as a theme so that's how the overall uh, structure of the presentation. So without taking much of a time, just going straight away to the first slide. Yeah. So this is a framework. We call it as 
uh, VCTS framework. And V stands for valuation, C stands for cycle, business cycle, T stands for triggers, S stands for sentiments, right? And I would like to give a very, very uh, uh, analogy which is very close to us. So whenever we create a framework or whenever we create a structure to uh, let's say whether giving a view about equity market or fixed income, we always look to uh, industry and you would be very well aware about it, uh, airline industry, right? So the moment you step into, uh, into an airline, the first thing which you would be noticing is that you would be, if, if you look at the cockpit and you will see that the pilot they are going through a various checklist, uh, whether the brakes are working properly, is the lights working properly, uh, is the air conditioning working properly, so on and so forth, right? So it's kind of a checklist or the framework which airline industry uses before taking off a, a particular flight, right? So that's a framework which we follow. Similarly, if you look at even in the, even if, if you look at surgeons, or doctors, when they go for a surgery, they have a framework or a checklist readily available with them, which acts as a barometer or a guiding light for them that key everything, all the equipments are in place, everything is sanitized, etc. etc. Right. So the point here is that we draw a lot of inferences for from such industries which have practiced. Uh, the art of doing things in a proper framework kind of a way. So that's where we thought we will also have a framework whenever we have to create a view on equity market. And that's when we came up with this framework of VCTS, Valuations, Business Cycle, Trigger and Sentiments. And around these four elements is what I'm going to construct the overall equity market view. And then we will move on to housing as a team. So let's cover one by one. Uh, I'm moving on to the first element that is valuations, right? And valuations is very important, right? So just to give you an example, if you are uh, going to buy a shirt, right? so first thing you look at is the, uh, let's say most of us, right? We look at the price tag first. Well, how much is going? How much is this shirt going to cost, right? So, so there is a price tag attached to understand whether a particular shirt is expensive or cheap. Similarly, for equity market also there are certain elements. Or, or certain factors, to put it in a right way, uh, certain factors which helps in understanding whether the market is expensive or the market is cheap. Right? So there are indicators like price to earnings, price to book value. These are certain indicators which tells us whether the market is expensive or not. So, so valuations wise, if you look at these indicators, price to earning, price to book value, we have seen them getting heated up. But in the last five, six months, we have seen some good correction in the equity market. And that's why price to earnings or the price to book value indicator, which talks about valuations is kind of cooled off at this point of time. Although the valuations is not cheap, it kind of has cooled off from the highs, which we have seen six, six and a half months back. So that's on valuation. The first parameter, which we look at second parameter is business cycle. Now, again, to give you a very simple example. How would you relate business cycle is that if you, if you want to understand whether a particular human being is healthy, a, a doctor would look at his heartbeat is his heartbeat beating at a 72 or 75 base point basis, uh, beats per minute. His temperature is okay. Uh, maybe his eyesight, etc. So you will get an idea that whether a person is healthy or not. Right? So similarly, for understanding whether a particular economy or a country is healthy or not, you look at these business cycle indicators. These are again certain indicators which tells us that whether a particular economy is running at full pace, is it running at a slow pace or not. So certain indicators which we look at very closely to create a market view is credit growth, uh, which is right side on the right side of the graph, which highlights that how much lending activity or how much loans are getting dispersed uh, uh, in, in an economy. So why is it important? Because you get to know that uh, how much activity is happening. Is corporates ready to let lo take loans? Is individuals buying more? Are they going for loans from banks or not? So it talks about the health or the economic activity in a 
particular country. So credit growth is something which we look at very closely. So currently, the credit growth is close to 9%. And if I compare it with, let's say, 2007, and 2007, I am keeping it as a comparison is because 2007 was considered to be a, a, a peak of equity market or a bubble of equity market. That time, credit growth was almost close to 20-22%. But today, if you look at it, it's close to 9%. So we still have a lot of headroom for business cycle to recover. So that's why we are calling business cycle at a early stage or a nascent stage. What this means is that there is still headroom for Indian economy to pick up pace. Uh, that means you can see corporate profitability picking, earnings picking because the business cycle is still at a early stage. So that's a, a point which you should keep in mind when you look at business cycle, which gives more understanding on the health of the economy. So Indian economy is still at a nascent stage at this point of time. Third thing, T of VCTS, that is triggers. And triggers can be positive, triggers can be negative. So to explain triggers in a simple manner, triggers is something which is which would be having an impact on the equity market in a positive or a negative way. You need to keep a watch on triggers in which direction they are moving based on which the equity market can shape up, right? So what are the triggers we are looking at this point of time to get an understanding how the equity markets is moving? First trigger is US Fed rate hike. How are they going to go about the whole rate hike cycle? Already we have seen one rate hike. If US Fed continues to remain very aggressive uh, in terms of rate hike, that can have some negative reactions to equity markets. If US Fed slows down, that can be positive for equity markets. So that's something which you should keep in mind in terms of trigger number one. Trigger number two is geopolitical tension. You're already seeing two countries uh, engaging in war due to which there is escalation around. Right. So we need to see that how this thing is going to shape up, how de-escalation is going to happen. If it continues, what are the effect on the whole supply chain? What are the effect on commodity prices? You would have seen on newspaper, people talking about oh, oil is shooting up, steel prices are shooting up, aluminum prices are shooting up. So we need to see if there is a de-escalation happening. If de-escalation happens, what would be the impact on commodity prices, supply chain and all. If it gets elongated, it can have some negative reaction on the equity market. If it gets de-escalated, it would be positive for the equity markets. So that's trigger number two. Trigger number three, sentiments. And why sentiments is extremely important? That sentiments is all about participation in equity market. Because when you talk about equity markets, you have lot of participants who are investing on a daily basis, monthly basis, yearly basis, right? So you have foreign institutional investors who are investing, you have domestic institutional investors, you have mutual funds investing, you have retail investors investing, right? So you need to get the flavor or get a sense that how aggressive are these investors? Are they buying or are they selling? Normally, it's always prudent if you see everybody selling, it's a great time to invest. So like if foreign institutional investors are selling, domestic institutional investors are selling, it's a great time for you to invest, right? So just to give an example, March 2020, when actually COVID struck, uh, what happened is that that month you saw everybody selling. And if you would have invested at that point of time, it would have been a great uh, return period for you or great opportunity for you to create return in that. So sentiments is also an important aspect which we look at in triggers. If you see too much of participation in equity markets, that's the time when you should back off. If you see uh, uh, too much of uh, too much of people actually not investing very aggressive, that's a good time to invest on that. I'm just uh, expanding on this sentiments part. Just to give you facts and figures, if you look at IPO participation in the last one, one and a half years has gone quite high. That means the participation rate in, in Indian markets has improved drastically. So that's something which you should be careful on. This is a good chart which talks about foreign institutional investors investing and domestic institutional investors 
trends of investing. So if you look at in the last six months, and I think this is for the first time in the last 10, 12 years, I have seen uh, FII is being so aggressive in terms of their selling and DII continuously supporting that by kind of buying. So you can see red line, which is red bars, which is domestic institutional investors buying and FIS selling. So uh, it's been, we have seen a good counterbalance on the uh, FII and DII purchase side. Right? So, so in terms of sentiments wise, if you uh, ask at this point of time, the fourth VCTS element, the S sentiments part clearly shows that at this point of time, uh, senti sentiments is more high to neutral kind of a zone where you're seeing good participation from domestic institutional investors. The only comfort is that FIS are selling. So you can be more neutral in terms of sentiments wise. Now, just to put everything together, uh, I have mentioned valuations. I have mentioned business cycle triggers and sentiments. Now, the final element, what we can summarize, what we can take out from the equity market view is that although valuations look slightly high, uh, the business cycle still remains at a very nascent stage. So there is still headroom for corporate profitability to improve, earnings to improve. Right? Triggers wise, we need to keep a very close eye that how US Fed rate hike is happening, uh, how the de-escalation happens. Uh, between Russia, Ukraine, we need to look at how the sentiments, how the retail investors are behaving. All this is the element which we need to look at very closely. These can keep market volatile. So we need to keep a very close eye at this point of time. Now, our recommendation is that you should look out for those schemes, uh, those, those, uh, uh, those products, which has flexibility. Right. So this is a time where you will see a lot of elements coming into picture. You will see a lot of triggers getting uh, materialized. So that's why we believe at this point of time, you should have themes or uh, or products uh, which are flexible enough at this point of time. Right. And talking about sectors, which we like at this point of time in terms of the overall equity market, we like more domestically oriented sectors. Why domestically oriented sectors? Like I highlighted, India is still in a nascent stage in terms of business cycle. If you compare it with US, which is at the matured phase, uh, the possibility of business cycle moving from, from the nascent to the mid cycle and then to matured phase would result in much better corporate profitability, corporate earnings. That's why we are more focused on those sectors which are more domestically oriented. So banks, auto, capital goods, infrastructure are the sectors which we like at this point of time. Housing, real estate is the theme which we like at this point of time. And that's why you are seeing uh, housing as a theme. We are talking today more on housing theme is because this is one theme which we are quite comfortable and positive at this juncture, right? So that's the part one of my presentation where I wanted to give you a brief on the equity outlook at this point of time. Let's move on to the part two, uh, which talks about more on the housing theme, which Namrata very uh, beautifully mentioned that uh, it's it's a very broad theme. Uh, the cycle is turning. There are some green shoots. So let's more uh, let's understand more about housing theme at this at this juncture. Right. I think this is a very simple and. Uh, basic slide and everybody would relate to this roti kapra makan right that's the basic need for an individual when we talk about but when you look at from indian context i think uh, roti that part of element is uh, that part of uh, part of the equation is al already solved uh, from from india's part of part of uh, india's part if and mainly because if you look at uh, india is a very strong powerhouse when it comes to agriculture, almost 54% of population is employed in the agriculture space. So the issue with roti is kind of solved for us. When we move to kapda, uh, clothing side, if you look at, uh, we are one of the major exporters in comparison with, let's say, Bangladesh, Vietnam. So even kapda part is something which kind of sorted out for us. The part which we need to fix, and that's where Government has also put a lot of focus is the Makan part or the shelter part. Right? So we have a 
population of 1.3 billion and uh, we need to look at uh, that the penetration or the availability for housing is there for everyone so this is an element which we believe in the coming 7 8 years is going to pick up more aggressively people are going to look at makan or or the penetration of uh, shelter is going to improve there is a clear drive from government also in terms of providing shelter for uh, most of the population so that's why we believe it's a good uh, time for looking at housing theme at this juncture right so i think briefly if i talk about on what are the green shoots or the catalysts which are there at play at this juncture and why we are very positive on uh, housing as a theme uh, that why it can be a good opportunity for investment at this point of time is mainly because of these eight elements which i have just put in front of you on the slide uh, and i'll cover one by one briefly population demographic urbanization wealth effect oversupply getting digested easy financing reasonable valuations and government policy let's understand all this one by one starting with the first slide on population and uh, and this is a world bank forecast that india's population is going to continue to rise till 2050 and if you compare it with other other countries let's say china uh, clearly there is an indication that by 2030 the population will get plateaued so we are a population which is growing uh, and and there is in the coming years also we are going to see population growth this boots well for housing theme because if you have a larger population they have to they have to they have to live uh, and what we are observing is more of a nuclear family as compared to joint families you will see the demand for housing going to continue to go up in the coming years and that's why we believe this is a very good team at this point of time second part i'm trying to give more color to the overall population aspect that how the population is growing and what are the elements which can be extremely positive for housing as a theme uh next 15 years uh, if you look at the urban population it would be equal to uk and france population that means currently we have a uh, uh urban population of close to 35% of the overall population uh by let's say in the next 10 15 years estimate is that the 35% urban population will move to almost close to a figure of 40 to 43% if you have more urban population you need more houses you need more offices you need more roads so we are talking about a theme which is going to be there for the next 10 15 years in a positive manner and that's why we are that's point number 1 why we are positive on housing theme second thing generation z and millennials we talk about they are going to they are going to become a part of population in a big manner 50% of the population and they have a better earnings at this point of time they are more spending they are they have a much better aspiration so housing is going to be a strong theme for this generation also third part on the consumer wallet we expect the consumer wallet for individuals to increase expand uh it's it's estimated that it is going to touch close to us dollar 3000 uh 3000 in in the coming years that would be resulting in more spending or discretionary and that can also bode well for the housing theme fourth part on the lifestyle spend discretionary spending uh whether we are talking about let's say buying a ac buying a refrigerator uh, or uh, buying buying a television all this discretionary spending is going to become a bigger part for individuals they want to live better they want to see things better they want to feel better and that's why the discretionary spending is expected to grow from 24 to 40% so the elements which or the or the sectors which the sub sectors which i have mentioned refrigerator air conditioning etc also form a part of the overall housing theme and we believe that that can bode well for the investment in the in in this housing theme in the coming years yeah so i think this uh, slide i have briefly covered that if you look at india's urban population it's just 35% compared to other asian pay peers which are way ahead 
uh, you can see Brazil, Russia, China, uh, almost close to one, one and a half times or double the India's population. And this boots well for housing as a theme. If more people moves to urban locations, more uh, more houses needs to be created and that boots well for urban population. Wealth effect, I think uh, uh, this is a very, very interesting slide. And what we have seen in the last one, one and a half years, uh, where the sale of housing fl uh, of flats have gone higher is also to do with the wealth effect, which individuals are feeling at this point of time. A lot of individuals, retail investors has invested in mutual funds. They have invested directly in equity markets and equity markets mutual funds has done well so there is a good wealth effect which everyone is feeling at this point of time and the next part of wealth effect is that uh, uh, this perception gets translated into a more of an aspirational goal where people look for buying houses uh, and that's what we have seen in the last one one and a half years so a wealth effect which has been created also votes well for housing as a theme at this point of now, we normally, uh, to be honest, everyone is a bargain hunter, right? So uh, whenever we see a sale uh, in, let's say, a shopper stop or we see uh, Amazon's, Amazon uh, big billion day sale, what happens? Everybody rush for uh, whenever there are big discounts available, right? So housing as a sector or real estate as a sector, if you look at it has been going through a discount or a, a, a valuation correction in the last seven, eight years. Uh, so from 2012, 2013, we haven't seen land or building prices moving much higher. You can observe the same trend wherever you are from, whether we are talking about Mumbai, Bangalore, or Pune, the, the land prices or the building prices has not moved much, which gives a good, uh, good thrust for for housing as a theme because housing as a as a uh, segment is not in terms of valuations is available at a good discount at this point of time so there is a good chance the affordability for individuals has improved because of price not moving up and that can result in this theme performing well it can see good demand in the coming months and that can be positive for this theme yeah i think Again, this is this is an important slide again because when we when you talk about an individual buying a house, it's a it's a big ticket size purchase, right? It's not like you going and and buying an one kg apple or you going buying a, a laptop or or let's say a washing machine. When you're buying a house, it's a big ticket size. There is a good outflow of cash which happens, so. Most of the people who are buying a house, the important thing which they look at is how much I have to pay in terms of interest. What is the current prevailing housing loan, which is uh, housing loan rate, which is prevailing at this point of time. Right. So what you can see from this chart is that in the last 10, 12 years, this is the first time we are seeing the housing rate is at its lowest. Uh, the HDFC housing loan is somewhere around 6.7 or 6.75. So the point here is that in the last 10, 12 years, the affordability and also the lending or the loan rate has also come down in the last 10, 12 years, which again bodes well for housing as a theme. People would be looking more for, for, for taking loans from banks and then buying a new house. So that it bodes well for housing as a theme. This is a slide which talks about the mismatch between demand and supply. You would have read newspapers, articles in the last four or five years that there are a lot of unsold inventories or a lot of flats which are unsold and due to which the real estate companies are going through pressure. There is not new, not much of new construction happening. The real estate company's balance sheet is in bad shape. But what has happened in the last four or five years, the new supply or creation of new flats has come down and the demand has picked up. So the supply and demand mismatch, which was there in the last four or five years, which resulted in the price correction or the real estate company's balance sheet becoming bad has now started to improve. The supply demand mismatch is kind of getting corrected. 
the real estate company's balance sheet has improved, which again bodes well for the overall housing theme to be invested at this point of time. Uh, government forms a very important element when it comes to housing as a theme, because if you want to construct a house, you need to have a good road near that nearby that location. You need to have all the facilities available. Uh, so clearly, the current government is doing a lot of focus on capital expenditure. They are building roads. They are building various projects, which is more capex oriented. In fact, the government is also focusing more on affordable housing. So P PM Awas Yojana under that the outlay which has been almost close to 480 billion in the current budget that is also extremely positive or bodes well for the housing sector at this point of time. Uh, this is one interesting slide and I thought I'll put it over here that just to give a context that the penetration which is there in India is much lower and there is huge opportunity for housing sector or housing theme to perform well. Cement is a very important input material for, for housing, right? So uh, if you can get an idea that key, what is the cement production in a particular country, you can get an idea that how much infrastructure or housing development is happening in a particular country. If you look at China, China's uh, uh, yearly basis, the cement production is almost close to 2,300 million tons. And India's, if you compare it, is almost close to 300 million tons per year, which is equivalent to India being a, 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 like, if you compare it with China, we would be back in 1992. So 1992 is when China used to produce 300 million tons of cement. We are somewhere there. So you can imagine the scale of improvement which can happen in the coming years. And that's why we believe this is a very strong theme that housing can play out well in the coming years. Uh, like Namrata mentioned, I'm just reiterating this point and it's very important as, as a takeaway that when you invest in a particular sector fund or when you invest in a particular theme, it can be very narrow. I can just give you an example. If you are investing in IT, it only invests in a IT theme or, a sec on, or that particular sector. If you're looking at an FMCG sector fund, it will invest in only FMCG sector or a banking fund. It will invest only in banking sector. But when you talk about housing as a theme, it's a very broad theme. It's a very, it, it encompasses a lot of sectors. Like for example, if you have to construct house, you need steel for creating a structure. You need cement for making that structure strong. You need paints to, uh, pay, to put it on the walls. You need electricity so that your all the appliances can work. You need appliances like AC, washing machine, uh, uh, refrigerator, right? All this is required for you to actually create a house. And that's why all this gets encompassed in the housing theme. And that's why we believe this is a very broad theme for investors. What a broad themes actually helps the fund manager to be flexible enough to move between various sectors. It helps fund managers to identify much better ideas from a wide set of companies. And it also gives flexibility that to invest to fund manager to invest in large, mid and small. So that's, that's why we believe housing being a broad theme uh, can be extremely positive for fund manager to flexibly move between various sectors at this point of time. Uh, that's the summary slide. And uh, I would like to again reiterate that when you talk about housing theme, it's a very long cycle, right? It's not a short cycle, like what you would have seen in, let's say, commodities or metals. It's a very long cycle. So just to give you an example, like from financial year 2005 to financial year 2013, we have seen a good up cycle for housing theme. That's when you would have seen demand being robust supplies being lesser so there was a good there was a good match between demand and supply the investors sentiments the income job prospects was very high investor confidence was good so it was a good up cycle for investor for housing as a theme from financial year 2005 to financial year 2013 post 2013 we have seen a good correction 
in the housing as a theme mainly because you have seen lot of launches inventory is getting unsold so there was a clear mismatch the investor confidence kind of got uh, got on on a on a lower level mainly because of you can say demon being there gsts uh, uh, you have seen nbfc crisis which kind of dented the investor confidence and that's where you have seen housing theme coming down from fi 2013 to fi 2020 but now in the last one one and a half years we are seeing green shoots we are seeing positive catalyst at play the demand supply getting uh, properly matched the balance sheet of real estates improving because the inventories are getting sold the investor confidence who wanted to invest in uh, housing projects or flats their confidence improving and that's why we believe housing theme is at is at the nascent stage and we believe this can pick up well in the coming years and that's why we believe this is a good time for uh, for closely looking at housing as a theme so with that I, i would like to just summarize over here that we talked briefly about equity market outlook where we covered valuation cycle trigger and sentiments where we highlighted that valuations although high business cycle remains supportive you need to look at few triggers at this point of time which can keep the markets volatile volatile like us fed uh whether we are talking about uh, the, the russia ukraine crisis or whether we are talking about the sentiments how people are investing right so uh and and then we talked about saying that the themes or the sectors which are looking positive like banking real estate construction housing are sectors which are looking positive at this point of time and then we moved on to uh, housing as a theme where we clearly highlighted that there are a lot of catalyst which are at play at this point of time there are green shoots which we are seeing uh that the housing as a theme is in for a long up cycle and can create a good proposition for investment so with that uh, i'll pause over here and uh, thank you for your patient listening back to namrata thank you yeah, thank you so much manish that was wonderful i mean i think you explained in such a simple way and you know you so many examples which was uh, which really i think uh, made uh, so much difference in terms of learning about uh, the housing theme that you were trying to tell us about um so of course we have a few questions for you some of the questions might be a repeat of what you've already explained in the talk but uh, we do think that those questions are important and there's no harm in reiterating some of those points sure. so um, you know so uh, the first question is um, you know i'm sure all of us understand that inflation of course has an impact on the housing market so uh, you know how much inflation is going to impact the housing market going forward so what is your take on that yeah actually this is a question which we normally get uh, whenever we have uh, talked about housing as a theme and and you are correct because people look at inflation very closely but yeah. i would like to say here that there is no direct correlation between inflation and housing theme performance because just to give an example from 2003 to 2007 it was a it was a phase where you have seen inflation being higher interest rates moving higher but that was also the phase where you have seen housing theme doing very well the logic or the rational behind that is that when you are investing in housing theme what all companies you are investing so i'll just, i can give you an example you are going to invest in steel companies if the steel prices are going up you as an investor if you are investing in steel companies you are going to benefit because the corporate profitability for steel companies are going up so there is a profitability for that when asset prices are moving if the flat prices are moving if the inflation is moving higher the flats uh, those flats which are getting sold if the prices are moving higher the real estate companies will do well if real estate companies do well if you are investing in that real estate companies in housing theme you stand to benefit from that so the point here is that these are companies which actually benefit from some bit of inflation some bit of interest rates moving higher i can give an example of banking also whenever the interest rates moves higher the profitability for banks also improve and in this okay. housing theme you are going to take house banks also as an exposure so if banks does well your portfolio will also do well 
the challenge comes the challenge comes uh, namrata when you have inflation also and growth coming down we call it as stagflation period that's when you can look at uh, that's a problem statement for let's say housing statement but today when we are talking uh, there is inflation but there is growth also after covid things are opening up activities picking up growth picking up so it's a good a uh, mixture of inflation and growth being there which is positive for housing as a thing so that's why we are positive even with inflation being there thank you okay fair um you know so um even when it comes to interest rates for example uh logically speaking and what you have discussed as well if the interest rates go up then obviously cost of borrowing is on the higher side today we are looking at interest rates which are really low we are looking at 6 and a half 6.75 kind of interest rates for a home loan right but if interest rates were to go up in the near future you know with probably the fed increasing the interest rates and you know rbi doing the same here in india what do you think uh, would be the impact on the housing market do you think it will get impacted or do you think it may not get impacted to that extent yeah so namrata actually uh, when when you are when you are looking at interest rates you should also look at uh, when the asset prices which we are talking about here so when we are talking about land or building prices it has remained stagnant for almost uh, last 7 8 years mm. from 2013 to till date you haven't seen land prices moving you haven't seen building prices moving higher so there is a very strong positive uh, uh, positive uh, factor which is already been there in housing segment the valuations is very attractive in the last 7 8 years individuals uh, 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 i can say their uh, per capita income or let's say their increment part has been taken care they have been their income is growing by approximately 7 8% so you have on one side where the physical assets have remained stagnant it has not moved right so you are talking about where the valuations has corrected so even if the interest rates moves up by let's say 1 1 1/2% the core asset the physical asset which you are going to buy into that has corrected quite a bit in the last 7 8 years so it should not have a very major impact is what we believe even if interest rates move higher the affordability remains positive for indian investors okay okay, okay. fair enough okay um so now uh, you know there are multiple sectors that contribute to the growth of any economy yes i mean um how much does the housing sector contribute to manish hai were you able to hear my question no i just missed you for the last manish hai are you there can you hear me yeah i just missed you namrata yes, for the last yes, i can hear you now sure so the question was how much does the housing sector contribute to the economic growth of an economy basically economic growth of a country how much does the housing sector contribute okay so uh, like i said housing sector is a very broad theme right so uh, in that you have banking also which comes into picture uh, you have uh, uh, like power also coming into picture there you have cement companies asian paints which are coming into picture so i can give you a a, a rough estimate Uh, of the broader index let's say when you are talking about nifty 50 uh, mm-hmm. you have close to 24 to 26 companies which can be a part of housing as a theme and nifty 50 is mm-hmm. the broadest uh, of of you for for someone to understand the valuations or the overall economies because it covers almost 84 85% of the overall economy so out of that 84 85% of nifty 50 uh so out of 50 companies almost 25 to 26 companies are eligible for housing as a theme so i can say that uh of the complete nifty 50 50% can easily constitute in the housing as a theme so it's a very broad theme namrata that's what uh, yeah. which investors can take yeah. yeah i mean we understand that and and that's why you know, i do believe that housing as a theme is a brilliant theme because it has multiple sectors involved in it right so yeah okay um is it time to buy housing finance companies from your perspective 
ஒரு <laughs> where even housing companies got corrected in the last 2 to 1 and a half years their mm-hmm. non performing assets were kind of elevated but that all has corrected quite a bit npas has improved especially for banking housing finance companies net interest margins has improved so they are looking much healthy housing finance companies are looking much healthy but i would strongly recommend that you should look at more broader aspect of housing thing where it encompasses power uh, it it comprises of uh, all other segments pains etc and so that would be a much better play at this point of time thank you yeah. more diversified portfolio would be better basically yes just- yes more more diversified banks are looking very positive so i think banks also can okay. um so you know looking at from a fund manager's point of view if in a housing team a fund manager has to pick stocks right how easy or difficult it is for a fund manager to pick you know quality companies in construction and infrastructure space how easy or difficult is it yeah that's yes absolutely i think that's a uh, i can say a bang on question because whenever you talk about infrastructure whenever you're talking about companies they, these are companies where you have to have a lot of leverage because you are investing in a lot of fixed assets right yeah. and the gestation period for these companies to make profitability is pretty long maybe 5 years 10 years like that right so that's true yeah. for infrastructure companies uh when you are talking about companies which are involved in let's say road building companies which are in, involved in airport building airport development companies which are in in terms of port port construction so for them yes the fixed cost or the fixed assets which they have to create is much much uh heavy much much the gestation period is much longer the advantage of housing theme is that you are looking at players who won't be so heavily invested in the fixed assets because you are talking about a particular uh construction of a building or let's say a, a construction of a particular commercial property it's not as heavy as constructing a 25000 km road or creating an airport and all so the outlay right. for those is much lower and that's why we believe uh, the balance sheet for such companies are much much better they are not much leverage like a heavily infrastructure related kind of a company so i think that's that's why uh, when we talk about housing theme it's a much much better managed companies in terms of balance sheet leverage and all okay great yeah okay and uh, which are the top few sectors expected in uh, you know in your fund top few sectors yeah so if you look at uh, just to give you a, a a comparative understanding if you look at nifty housing index which would be the benchmark for the fund which we are launching uh, if you compare it with that nifty housing index almost close to 25% is there in uh, uh, banking and financial companies housing financial companies so that would be a major part you will see uh, uh, power for uh, creating almost close to 5 to 7 you have cement which is almost close to 5 to 10% so that's how the constituents of the uh, fund would be so you would be seeing 25 26% around banks and all. so that's how the uh, would okay 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 um so for a retail investor who is looking to invest uh, you know his or her money um how can a retail investor look at investing in the housing team so uh, you know for a retail investor what percentage of the portfolio should this be and how should he look at investing in this team in general yeah actually uh, uh so i i think i should give some conditions apply over here because when you're talking about retail invest is a huge uh, band you're talking about there are a lot of, so i think definitely you need to look at your asset allocation overall asset allocation right so uh, if if you have uh, let's say your core part of the portfolio well set 
uh, when i talk about core part of the portfolio if i have good exposure towards large cap companies if you have good exposure to hybrid schemes like balance advantage fund etc if your core portfolio is kind of well constructed i think you can venture into these good theme funds thematic funds like housing is a good theme which is going to play out for the next 7 8 years so once right. your core part of the portfolio is well set i think uh, a portion of your satellite portfolio or the uh, 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 ancillary part of your portfolio a good portion of that can also be invested in th- uh, themes like housing at this point of time so it depends on your asset allocation but yeah it's a good theme to be played for even a retail investors so for all our viewers i mean we've discussed about core and satellite portfolio multiple times in multiple of our sessions and uh, as all of you might know about 70 to 80% of your investments should go into core and say about 20 to 30% in satellite portfolio and satellite portfolios what would comprise of uh, you know uh, thematic funds sectoral funds small cap funds so uh, yeah so this particular theme uh, you know the housing theme definitely is a good value add to the satellite portfolio because you know by investing in a housing team you are getting benefit of uh, so many other sectors so many other stocks so it's definitely a good value add so you could look at a reasonable chunk of your satellite portfolio in this particular uh, team okay uh, what are some of the industries that will benefit from the housing team directly or indirectly i know most of these questions are interlinked but if uh, you know you think uh, I, you can just spend maybe an, a minute or two on this okay so i think i will benefit from the housing team industries yeah so i think i i'll give a example over here right uh whenever you uh, whenever government creates a budget and this is true for any country whether you're talking about us uk europe right whenever you create a budget that how much i'm going to i'm going to spend into into the economy right so there are two kind of spending which a government can do right one type of spending is where you are doing more of spending where you are directly giving to individuals and in india you would have seen manrega kind of uh, spending where you are directly giving money to the individuals that's more of a consumption driven growth for an economy you the individual gets the money directly from government and so then he gets subsidies right subsidies right like you are talking about subsidies you have food subsidy bill or an lpg subsidies you are directly giving to an individual right so what happens in that case the consumption goes up uh, you have let's say he is directly going to a, a fmcg company and buying some let's say atta or some cosmetics like that the second way of prepping the whole economy is by spending into capital or capital formation kind of uh, uh, activities like building roads building airports uh, building i can say dams right what happens when you do the second part of spending right what happens is that let's let's take an example you're building road right? so you need raw materials like cement you need steel you need tar you need lot of human resources also and if if you do these kind of an activity there is a multiplier effect which comes into picture you are Uh, creating the steel industry a good prep up in terms of their profitability cement industries is getting benefited lot of human resources is being employed so the employment rate goes up they get earning they in turn go and spend on fmcg companies yeah. so this is a much better way of reviving the whole economy if you are doing on that so when we talk about housing housing is something similar to that coming back to your question is that if if the government is spending more on housing related activity like pm avas yojana which is affordable housing if they are doing more on housing what happens is that there is a wide set of industries which gets benefited whether we are talking about steel whether we are talking about cement we are talking about uh, consumer electronics like fridge washing machine etc we are talking about banking companies etc etc so housing has a much better multiplier effect on many industries so if housing team picks up you will see a very strong economy going forward i hope that answers number of that question yep so i guess even this year's budget there was a pretty big focus on infrastructure right if uh, i'm not mistaken and you know there's this uh, wonderful Chief saying that says that for every 1 rupee which is spent on infrastructure 2 to 2 1/2 rupees comes back into the economy so okay. infrastructure spend housing spend obviously has a big impact 
Okay, um, what are some of the risks which are associated with companies which are engaged in housing and real estate space? So are there any risks involved that we should be aware of? Yeah, so uh, when, when you're talking about uh, companies who are engaged in housing or real estate development, and this is, I'm talking about core, core real estate companies, not talking about, let's say, banking or paint companies and all. But if you talk about real estate companies, again, they have to create fixed assets uh, they have to create structures which are uh, which is something which is uh, heavy heavy expenditure which they have to do so normally these companies are leveraged so if you are investing in these companies in the wrong time that means if the cycle is not favorable it can have a very bad reaction to the overall portfolio that's why i gave an example from 2013 to 2020 uh, the real estate prices didn't move anywhere and mm. real estate companies were struggling with their balance sheet because they invest a lot in fixed assets and all that. Yep. So that's a challenge which you need to keep an eye that you're catching the theme at the right time. And that's why we believe today, most of the real estate companies, if you look at their balance sheet, is much improved because the flat sales has improved over the last one, one and a half years. Uh, their balance sheet has improved. The interest rates has come down. So their interest cost has come down down so that's why the cycle is improving that's something a caveat which you should keep in mind when you're investing in housing okay. okay um so if an investor were to put pick companies in the housing space what are some of the most critical metrics that they should keep in mind while investing yeah i think uh like I said, there are a lot of sectors which are in play when it comes to housing themes. So when you're talking about, just to give you an example, when you're talking about banking, you need to look at very closely their non-performing assets, uh, net interest margins, which you should look at. When you're talking about real estate construction companies, you need to look at their debt to uh, EBITDA or how much they are leveraged, right? what's their cash flows, how, what kind of projects they are launching. Uh, how how good is their execution? That's on the real estate part. Uh, I think paints company, when we talk about which is part of it, anyways, most of the paints companies are uh, cash rich, but even still you need to look at their valuations, which is more imp important. You need to look at more closely that are they available at a good valuation or not. Okay. Cement company, again, you have to look at what's the demand, what is the capacity utilization they are running at. So these are certain indicators which will give you a flavor that the health of these these sectors are good or not. So I think okay. that should. Okay. Sure. I mean, uh, thank you so much, Manish. I think we're done with the questions. We've answered most of the questions which the viewers had asked. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. And I hope uh, you guys found the session useful. And uh, do go ahead and explore the housing theme. I'm sure you're going to benefit out of it. So thank you so much once again, and thank you, Manish, for joining us today. And I wish all of you all the best and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.